this book gave me a lot of things to think about. Also, like maybe don't read this book if you are scared of bugs. Very annoying. Hi everyone, it's me. Today's video is gonna be so much dang fun and I'm probably honestly a couple weeks late <laughs> in making this video, but you know what? Better now than never. Is that a saying? Is that... You know what I mean? You know what I mean. In today's video, we are going to be reading the best books of 2023. I've already seen a whole bunch of other like booktubers do this video, but we're gonna do it now and we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. So the way I've chosen like what the best books of 2023 are is very simple. I've just looked at the Goodreads Choice Awards and I've just seen like, you know, what the people have voted for. So we're gonna read the books that won the Goodreads Choice Awards in this video. And I am only going to be focusing on the categories that I care about the most, because there are a lot of categories. In general, I like fantasy, romance, fiction. Those are basically the genres that I read, so I've taken from those categories. And so for the books that we are going to read this week, the winner of the best fiction of 2023 was Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang, and I surprisingly have never read this book. Surprising for me because I love R.F. Kuang. I have read the entire Poppy War trilogy. I read Babel this year, and at this point she has become an auto buy author for me and yellow face is literally the only book from her that I have not read yet so I'm really excited to read this I know it's very different from her other books because it is fiction it's not fantasy but nonetheless I'm really excited to read this book because I've just seen it everywhere I've heard everyone talking about it also the cover is just like so in your face because it's just like this big yellow book with a face on it i feel like it's been staring at me every time i see like mention of it so we will be reading yellow face in this video we're also going to be reading the historical fiction winner which was wayward by amelia hart also really excited to read this book i actually have it already on my kindle so i've already purchased it i just haven't gotten around to reading it so i'm really excited and then a bunch of categories that the winners i have already read. So in Romance, Happy Place by Emily Henry was the winner of 2023. Loved that book. It was also one of my top books for 2023 and I actually voted for it as well in the Goodreads Choice Awards. I've read that already. It's a five star for me. In the Romantasy category, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros won and <laughs> you guys know I love that book and that entire series. So yeah, clearly I love that too. Also a five star. In YA Fantasy, the winner was Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross, which I also have already read this year. I actually gave that a four star, but I gave Ruthless Vows the sequel a five star. So overall, I did love that entire duology as well. And then for the last category that I care about, I actually have not read this book. In the fantasy category, Hellbent by Lee Bardugo was actually the winner. I am not going to read Hellbent in this video because Hellbent is actually the second book in a duology in which I have not yet read the first book. So it just would not make sense for me to just jump straight into Hellbent. But in all honor of Hellben being the winner of the fantasy genre, I am going to read Ninth House, which is the first book that comes before Hellbent in the duology. Also very exciting because I do already own that book and I've just been waiting to read that one as well. So <laughs> I'm really excited to read these books because as I mentioned in the romance, romanticy, and YA fantasy genres, I did love all the winners of those categories. So I feel like Goodreads just knows me and like there's a good chance that I'm also gonna like the winners of these other categories. So there's a very long-winded way of saying that this week I'm going to be reading Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang, Wayward by Amelia Hart, and Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. And these three are all books that I am already excited to read, are books that I have already purchased, and so we're gonna have so much fun this week. So as I mentioned, I do already own all three of these books, but we are going to start with Yellow Face, and I have it on my Kindle. The premise of this book is really interesting, and it does sound very different from Babel and Poppy War. That kind of makes me even more excited to read it, because I just love R.F. Kuang in general as an author, and I think it'll be really interesting to see how her writing translates to a different genre. So if you somehow have not heard of Yellow Face, this is a fiction about an author who dies, and then our main character is an author that is still alive, <laughs> who steals the unpublished manuscript from this dead author and publishes it under their own name or like a pseudonym. So something important to note about the story as well is that the author who does die is Asian and the person who stole the manuscript and published it under a new name is not Asian but decided to publish the manuscript under kind of like a 
fake new mashup kind of a name that makes their name sound more Asian. So I've heard, you know, we have a lot of messages with racism, cultural appropriation, all those kinds of themes in this book. And I have heard, honestly, such mixed reviews about Yellow Face. I have heard some people say that they absolutely love it. I have heard some people also say that they hated this book because you're reading from the POV of the author who steals the book. So you're just spending your entire time in the mind of this character that you really, really dislike. I've heard from some people it's kind of hard to get through because it's just annoying and frustrating being in this mind of like a horrible person. I'm just so curious because as I said again, I love RF Kuang, but this is the only book I think that I've heard really mixed reviews about. Like in general, I feel like almost everyone loves Babel, almost everyone loves the Poppy War trilogy and Yellow Face is the only book that's that's kind of gotten mixed reviews. I think on Goodreads it only has like a 3.8 something too which is a lot lower than the ratings of her other books. I don't know really intrigued. The cover also, as I mentioned, it's just like so in your face. Like you see this cover and you can't forget it. And you can't see the color in my Kindle, but like the paper copy of this book is like this bright yellow color that you just can't miss. Yellow Face, our first read. Let's go. <laughs> Say something that will make my day. I'm literally like five pages in and this main character already is like so annoying, sounds so petty, just like the thoughts in her head. Very annoying, but I feel like I'm getting entertained by it, at least for like the first five pages. It's like entertaining so far. I don't know if it'll get old eventually, but she seems like very judgmental, very like looks at the worst in people. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just finding it really funny to read. Don't know if it'll get old, but <laughs> so far it's funny. Was I supposed to know that she'd leave? Was I the naive to think that she'd be the one? Whoa. Why did she go? I met her back in 2005. Hey guys, it is, what day is it today? It's Tuesday morning. I actually finished Yellow Face yesterday. I didn't give you like a mid book update because I feel like I just read it so quickly. I just like powered through it. It was such a quick read. So I did give this book a 4.75 on Goodreads or I gave it a five star, but my personal rating is 4.75. I really enjoyed this book most of the way through. As I mentioned, like when I was starting reading this book, I thought the perspective of being in this very morally gray character it was really funny. I don't know, it was really entertaining just like being in the head of someone so jealous and so petty. And I feel like, not to like make myself sound like a horrible person as well, but I feel like the thoughts that went into this main character's head were thoughts that like I could see myself having as well, but like obviously in a very exaggerated way. Like just those feelings of jealousy, seeing other people have success. Like I feel like we've all had that feeling, no? Or am I just a horrible person? Like, obviously, like, my head didn't take it as far, like, nearly as far as the main character in Yellow Face did, but I could see how thoughts could spiral that way. The thing that separates, like, a good person versus a bad person, or, like, not even good and bad, like, morally gray versus, like, choosing the right decision. The main difference is just like whether or not we allow our intrusive thoughts to get there. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe I'm like making myself seem horrible <laughs> because I'm like trying to relate to this morally gray main character. Even though it's like this is ridiculous. This person is so like not good. I could see why like she would get there. <laughs> Speaking of morally gray characters, I feel like RF Kuang is just so good at writing morally gray in every single one of her books we have had a morally gray main character. Like in Babel, Robin was definitely morally gray. In the Poppy War, Rin was like for sure morally gray. But I feel like the difference in my experience with Yellowface is that I was not rooting for the morally gray main character where in Babel and the Poppy War, even though I could see the faults and the mistakes and the kind of like evil wrongness creeping into our main characters, I was still rooting for them. In Yellowface, I was not rooting for her. <laughs> but I found that a very interesting experience to read. This book just like, I don't know, blew my mind. It was so meta, like the things that this book was referencing. I learned a lot about the publishing industry. This book gave me a lot of things 
to think about. And I did find this book really like quick and easy to read. Like Babel and the Poppy War, I think they're more in depth, like big epic stories. So I think they read a bit slower, but Yellowface reads very, very quickly. It's written in very basic English, like very accessible. So it was also interesting to see RF Kuang just like use a different style of writing here. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't feel like RF Kuang, but it also did feel like RF Kuang at the same time. The only thing I didn't really like about this book is the way it kind of went off the rails in the end. It read like a lit fic most of the way through or a contemporary fiction, but then at the very end, without spoiling anything, it kind of turned thriller. <laughs> I'm not sure about the way this book ended, but overall would highly recommend this book. It's like very lighthearted, but also not at the same time. Okay, so we had a great experience reading our first Goodreads Choice Award book for this video. Next up, we're gonna stick with the Kindle for now, and we are going to read Wayward by Amelia Hart, which was the historical fiction winner for 2023. I have it here. So what is Wayward about? I'm gonna have to reference my phone notes for this. We fall Follow three storylines in this book. The first one takes place in 2019, where a girl flees London from an abusive partner and she heads to Wayward Cottage, which is a cottage inherited by some sort of a great aunt, like a distant family member that this girl barely remembers. And while she lives there, she starts like uncovering some really mysterious, weird, maybe magical witchy things that are just kind of lurking around in the cottage. So that's the most like modern day storyline in this book. The second storyline takes place in 1942 and it's about a girl who has been trapped by her own family it sounds like, trapped in her family's estate during World War II and she doesn't want to be trapped. I mean, who would? But like, she really wants to get out. She wants to get an education. She has a brother who's getting like an amazing education and she wants to like be like him. She wants his life as well. Her mother passed away a while ago, but was rumored to have gone mad before she passed away. She doesn't really know much else. She doesn't really have many traces left of her mother. The only thing she has left to remember her mother by is this mysterious locket with the initial W on it. Also like on the baseboard in her bedroom, she sees that there's a word wayward just scribbled into the baseboard very 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 mysterious our third storyline the one way back takes place in 1619 where we have another girl so we have our third girl and this girl is awaiting trial for the murder of a local farmer this girl does know a bit about magic she has been taught magic from her parents yeah her mother has taught her magic, but at this point in time, you know, witches are kind of frowned upon. We don't like magic. We're suspicious of these types of things. And so our girl, yeah, she's awaiting trial for a murder and she's having a really hard time trying to prove to everyone that she's actually innocent. This sounds so good. Just by the plot synopsis alone, I can see already how they might start to like connect and intermingle. And I really want to know, yeah, what this whole wayward thing is about. Really excited. I've never read a book by Amelia Hart before, but this just sounds so like moody and vibey and like good. So I'm really excited. <laughs> Close your eyes. Get some rest. I'm by your side. Good morning, guys. Something funny to share with you this morning. So I was reading yesterday and... Oh, hi, Sage. <laughs> you gonna come on my lap, baby? I was reading Wayward yesterday. I got up to like 130 pages. But you know when you like learn a new word or like a new concept, learn about a new thing, and then you just start seeing that thing everywhere, but like you swear you've never heard of this thing before that point? <laughs> it's happening to me with weevils. I don't know if you guys all saw this on TikTok, but there was like this viral video about weevils and how like, so there are these little bugs, right? And they can get into like your dried products, like into flour, into rice, spices, like dried pantry things. There are these bugs called weevils that can like leave eggs and then they hatch and then they're like, all around your house. Anyways, I saw a TikTok about weevils and I was like, this is the first time I've ever heard or seen of the term weevils. And now it's popping up everywhere. Like I can't get away from them. I saw them in like a completely unrelated YouTube video. And then yesterday I was reading Wayward and I took a picture of it because I, I was just like, there's no way. Weevils. <laughs> 
weevils everywhere. I don't know, I just, I found that really funny. But weevils aside, <laughs> I am really enjoying this book so far. It's giving me everything I wanted in terms of like the historical vibe. It's very moody, it's very witchy, and it's also very like mysterious. It has a good mystery vibe and I'm really, really liking that. It's kind of reminding me of The Unmaking of June Farrow, which was one of my favorite books of 2023, where we have like a connection between female members of the family, like through the generations, and we have that like mystery. Like our main character or like youngest of the generation like has no idea what this like kind of magical thing is that's being passed down through the generations of women, and I'm really liking it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna keep reading today. It's also like very gloomy and moody today, which is just adding to this. I really like it, so yay. Okay, we finished Wayward yesterday evening. I gave this book four stars. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I feel like Amelia Hart did a really good job with the three storylines, keeping them all engaging. I feel like when sometimes you read a book with multiple storylines, some of them kind of like, fall flat. You know, like when you're reading multiple VOVs and you switch to one POV and you just think like, ugh, like I don't want to read about this POV. Like, let's just switch over back to the other one because that story is more engaging. In Wayward, I actually was like fully immersed in all three storylines, all three POVs. So I think that was a really good thing. I also really just enjoyed seeing how the different families played roles in the different generations. Like we would see the same last names, we would see the same families and just witness like, yeah, how the different generations were acting and what role they played. My my biggest criticism about this book, the three storylines are a bit similar to each other, like a little too similar to each other. They all kind of struggle with the same things. They come across the same issues, maybe in slightly different variants. And I get that that was kind of the point point showing how the same issues happen through the generations over and over and over again but I feel like maybe they were just a bit too similar maybe it was just a bit like too much like hitting the nail on the head you know some things got a little bit repetitive especially like when we were getting to the second half of the book it also just made everything a bit more predictable because you see what happens to one girl and you're like okay well something like that's gonna happen to the other girl and the other girl so yeah I just wish there was like maybe a bit more variation but overall this book is really good gave it a four stars and also also, I just realized that this is Amelia Hart's debut novel. This is her first book ever written, and not only did she win the historical fiction category for the Goodreads Choice Awards, but she also won Best Debut novel of the Goodreads Choice Award. So she actually won two categories with Wayward, which is very, very, very impressive. Also, like maybe don't read this book if you are scared of bugs, because there's a lot of bugs. <laughs> in this book. Okay, but that's Wayward. And I did actually pick up Ninth House. I just read a little bit of it. I think I'm like, yeah, 22 pages in, so not much. This is going to be my third and final read of this video because Hellbent won the best fantasy category and I have not read Ninth House yet, which comes before Hellbent. Obviously, I'm going to read Ninth House. <laughs> this will represent Hellbent for me. This is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. It is a fantasy. I believe it's an adult fantasy. This is about a girl named Alex who is the most unlikely student attending Yale University or college. It's called college in the States, right? She is a freshman, but she doesn't really fit into the Yale typical standard because she kind of grew up as a hippie. She was never like a great student. She dropped out of school. She kind of got involved with drug dealers and she's just kind of been in trouble her entire life. But very traumatically, she gets involved in this multiple homicide that's unsolved. While she's recovering in the hospital, she gets offered a choice by the Dean at Yale and she gets an opportunity, like a full ride full scholarship to go to Yale. And so she's like, well, why wouldn't I go to Yale? for free. So she goes, she decides to turn her life around, but then she starts getting involved into these secret societies that like, you know, a lot of powerful people, politicians, etc., have been involved with in the past. And she realized that things at Yale and things about these secret societies are more sinister 
they appear and there's also magic involved. <laughs> this book has definitely drawn me in. It's pretty, as I mentioned, horrific. Like it's pretty gory already so far and I've only read 20 pages. It's kind of like a fantasy horror. <laughs> I'm liking the like Yale Dark Academia vibes. I'm liking the whole secret society thing. I always think that's always like interesting when there are stories about these secret societies. That's Ninth House so far. I'm gonna continue reading and just see, see how it goes. Also, if any of you guys actually went to Yale or know about Yale, is this like a Yale accurate map? I'm so curious because this map is really cool and I'm like, is this actually Yale University? Like, is this the actual layout? I've been thinking about my options Every detail in my head But it doesn't really matter Hey guys, I can't even remember when the last time I talked to you was for this vlog. It's definitely at least a couple days later now, but I did just finish Ninth House. Definitely had to like take my time reading through this because of like all the information <laughs> that you get in this book. We're definitely very like detailed in the magic system here, the politics, everything. And I just, I feel like if I knew a bit more originally about like the secret societies of Yale, then maybe this book would be easier to follow. But at the beginning of the book, no, you know what? Like throughout the entire book, essentially, I felt like my brain had to be on, like completely fully on because I was just getting so much information like loaded into my brain and all information I had to retain to be able to understand the story and like where we're going and the mystery of everything. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a 4.5 stars, but I definitely had to think a lot while reading this book and use my brain. I know like a little bit about the secret societies, the main societies I've heard of, like Skull and Bones and stuff, but like, I don't know, I'm not like that well versed in the secret societies. And so I feel like for someone who maybe knows Yale better, would be able to probably like breeze through this book a lot quicker than I did. But that being said, I did really, really like this book. I loved the whole dark academia. I love, even though I don't know much about the secret societies, I loved reading about them. It was so fun. I also now at this point, like don't know the lines between what was real about the societies and what was fiction. I also like midway through this book went onto Google and like searched, like I looked up the tombs of all the societies just to like see a picture of the exterior of all of them so I could picture where we were at all times. And now I really wanna just visit Yale and like see them all in person. But yeah, I love this book. I honestly, I actually loved this a lot more than Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I feel like I liked the vibe a lot more where Six of Crows was very like gang heisty. This was very dark academia, like murder mystery. So yeah. That's Ninth House, and I'm definitely gonna go on to read Hellbent now. I don't own it, so I will have to go and get it, but I'm really interested in completing this duology now. I'm going to leave this video here for now. I did read those three books, and I enjoyed all of them. So Yellow Face, I gave a 4.75. Wayward, I gave a 4, and then Ninth House, in substitution for a hellbent, I gave a 4.5. So I think this was a really successful reading week. Thank you to everyone who voted in the Goodreads Choice Awards for like basically choosing these books for me to read because I enjoyed all of them. Let's do it again next year. <laughs> That's it for now. If you did like this video, please leave me a like and a comment. If you don't know what to comment down below, let me know if you've read any of the winners of the Goodreads Choice Awards from 2023 and how you liked them. If you like me, subscribe, do that bell thing and I will see you in the next one.